Welcome to the Embarcadero Field Service Industry Template. In this demo video, we're going to show you some UI tips and tricks and how you can customize this demo template for your specific use case. So, this applies to both the Field Service App Client and the Field Service Admin application. So, for starters, we're going to we're going to edit this background image rectangle. And so the background image rectangle is above everything else in the application and it is set to hit test false so all clicks fall through it and ignore it it's also set to locked equals true so I can click here on the application and you'll see how, that my clicks are falling through this app this image that's set to the top but you can edit you can click on the image in the structure and, and make changes and edits there so I'm gonna bring up its bitmap property so that's the fill bitmap bitmap property and I'm gonna load up a new image into the background so you can see the change that it makes. All right, load this up, and you can see now I've completely rethemed the application with a new background image here. And then there's other themes you can change too, and we'll talk about that as well, where you can change the whole style, and then you can change the colors of these various rectangles here as well. So the other change you can make is you can edit this background rectangle here. And so this background rectangle, it has a fill property, and it's currently set to kind of gradient. And so we can edit that gradient here. So I'll do that now. And so I'm going to set this one gradient over here to a darker color. And then I'm also going to set this, the right gradient here, to another color over on this side. So I think I would like this color, which is close to the other color there. So I'm going to select that and you can see how it changed the look of the application and so I can change it again a little bit and, and you'll see how it changes. Make it a little bit darker here and I could change it to another different color here on the right and you'll see that the gradient changes. Maybe a darker color. Alright, so you can see that, that that makes that change and let's edit this the logo here. So I'm going to bring up the login frame and you never want to edit the frames directly in the main form. You always want to go to the root frame. So in this case, it's the login frame. And so there's the login frame, and it's just an image here. And you can change, make, change that image. You just bring up the multi-res bitmap right here, and then you just load up whatever new images you'd like to load up in that logo. The other thing we have here is we have this fill RGB effect. And so this image is actually white, but we're applying this T effect to it, uh, this, which is an component inside Rad Studio and this supplies a color to the entire component that it's that it's parented to. So we can change that color here and let's change that color to let's say green. Nice green color, lime green. And so you can see now it changed that there and then if we go over the main form you can see that it's changed it here as well and so now it's green. Uh, you can customize other things here. If you click on this T label you can change it from field service, you could change it to say my field service, and that will update it over here in this applicant in this main form. So another thing is if you make changes to these frames and you don't see the updates, or for whatever reason it, it's not updating correctly, you can always remove the frame from this view. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to click on this login frame, which is inside uh, the vert scroll box which and it has a tab control inside of that and so the two tabs inside of that are the login tab and the menu tab so on the login tab we have the login frame so we're gonna go ahead and delete that and then you'll see that I can easily add our new updated frame back in by just searching for frame in the tool palette and then grabbing that login frame here and now I, I, I have it parented to the login tab and then I'm going to change that login frame and I'm going to align it to client and that's going to bring it back to how it was before I removed it. So some other changes here we can make is that the login button here is a T button and it is taking the style from our Emerald Dark style book. So we're going to click on this Emerald Dark style book, and so our Emerald Dark style book here, which is a T style book, it has four different styles loaded up, and that's a premium style, the Emerald Dark style. It has the default one for Win32, it has an Android one, iOS one, and an OS X one. So I'm going to edit this, this default one, and I'm going to load up a different style. So I'm going to bring up my 
styles. So I already have all the premium styles downloaded here. I'm going to go into the Windows directory, and I'm going to load up this vapor style, because I know that's a dark style, and we'll see how it looks with this design. Yes, I'd like to apply changes. And now you can see that the design completely changed. This, this top color is different. The button is different. And if we drill down into the rest of the application, you'll see that the, all the tabs are different looking. And then all the various other different elements are also changed. And that's all based on the style. So now if we drill down into these other frames, you can see that some of the, the colors have not changed. Those colors are custom. Uh, so in this, for example, in the appointments frame, I'll bring that up. And then I'll go down here. So this, this is a tab control, and this applies across all the frames, or most of the frames, really. They have a, a T-list view on the main tab and then a, and a details tab. So we have our T-tab control, and you can see that it has a list tab and a, a the details tab. And so down at the bottom, you can see that there's these two little circles. And so, one, and so this is only visible at design time. And so if I select the second circle here, I will see the detail tab. And so in here you can see that I have a background rectangle here and I also have these green rectangles here. So I've I've customized the colors of these rectangles and so you'll you'll have to if you want to customize that color, you'll need to drill down into these detail tabs and and customize those directly. So let's see if I can change this color here. I'll we'll make it red just for All right. So that changes that color there. And so again, here's another the icon that we talked about. So this is in that, all right, there's a material design icon website. And so we bring that over, and you'll see if I search for cloud, which I did here, you can see this cloud icon, and then you can download for Android, and I've got it set to white. So that's all we did here for this. these other icons here. This is the contact info icon and this is a briefcase icon and so let's bring up one of these because these in, it, the logo only uses the one size but these are multi-res bitmaps and it has one size for each different scale here so there's a scale 1, 1.0 and then some devices have a 2.0 scale and, and etc so that's how you customize the various icons so also margins are very important Let's go here. So this image, I believe, has a margin on it. Let's go to that margin property. So you can see I have a margin of five. And so what that does is it makes a nice white space. So let's edit. Let's. I'm not sure it'll change the look here because it's only five. But let's remove that, and you can see how it's changing in the IDE the margin of the image. So let's. All right, we're going to do a margin of 50 here, and you'll see how it moves it over there. It's always nice to have nice margins around everything to create some white space. It looks much better than just having everything slammed up against the edges of, of your forms. L like, for example, this label here, it has a margin of 5 all the way around it. And so another good thing about margins is if you're using these align properties, it can make it so you can't access the parent control underneath your control. But the adding a margin all the way around, like I did here with this label, this allows you to click through to the parent and, and select it and move it around, for example. So that makes it easier to edit edit your your layouts and move them around with, by having those margins on those child controls. All right, so we talked about the frame. Let's go back to the frame control a little bit more. So each of these frames All right, we're on the second frame now. But each of these frames is embedded in this tab control. So we're going to bring up this tab control, the main tab control, and you can see there's a there's a frame embedded in each of these. And so this is just like the the login frame that we started out with. Except for that each of these different tabs has its own frame. And those frames correspond over here to the notify frame and the history frame, the profile frame, the progress frame, etc. And so one note about so we edited the color of this background rectangle. And so these other forms that they have, the tenant list form, you'll also have to make those same changes if you want those color changes and that background image change to these other forms. I believe there's only all right, there's two forms in this in this project. And then in the in the admin project there's maybe three or four different forms that you'll have to update. 
All right, so let's talk about the the image effects a little bit more. I already talked about the fill RGB effect was not which was nice. Let's bring up this profile frame. And you can see that I've got a an image here a background image. Let's let's visible that false so you can see. All right. So I've got an image here and on this background image I have a Gaussian blur effect. And so this Gaussian blur effect is applied at runtime and design time and it is just an effect you can drop on. You drop it onto the parent uh, control and it applies its effect to everything under that control. So you can see how I applied the blur effect. And so there was nothing else I had to do to blur out that image and make that design choice besides dropping that effect on there. So also this label control has a shadow effect on it. I don't have any text on here because this is live binded but we'll put text in here and you can see that there's a shadow effect on this and I can also enable and disable that shadow effect. Those, that's how effects work. If I go over here and I, I search for effect, you can see all the different types of effects that you can drag and drop onto your controls in the IDE. All right, so another important thing about it, this background image rectangle here is that it's set to locked and it's also set to hit test false. And so this image is above, let's, let's do a send a back and you'll see how it changes. All right, send a back. But if we do bring to front, it applies, it, it combines, I'm calling it a highlight look. It combines the pixels of this image because its opacity is set to 0 0.1. So let's set this to 1 and you'll see the difference. And we'll set it to 0 0.1 again. And let's, we'll set it to 0 0.3. And you can see how it changes the whole look of the application because it's above all the other controls, but it's not blocking any clicks. But it apply, And so one reason to do it this way versus having the image on the back of the form under all the controls is that it will apply above your T list views and your T tab controls. So it applies the image effect on top of those controls, whereas otherwise because they have a background, it would block that effect. So that's a lot of different tips and tricks you can use to customize your application. And that's about it for this demo video. Thanks for watching.